Oh, g'day champions. Um, we're back. There's uh, been a bit of a lull in output recently with videos because there's been a lot going on, of, as you may or may not have seen. Uh, but we're back with this Ampeg VL1002. It's been removed from the head shell. Uh, we've got reports of volume dropping over time, output failing shortly after, and smoke emitted. So that's always, <laughs> that's always a good one. So hopefully it won't be too hard to spot what happened. Now the first thing your little eye may have spied is this Marshall transformer over on its side, the output transformer. So that's the TXOP 00006. I never understood their part numbers. It's like, just get rid of some of the zeros, bro. But for some reason it's been put over on its side, uh, not mounted with the screw mounting uh, fixing holes there, but mounted with this craziness down here that just looks to me like stuff that was in someone's parts drawer and spacers and washers and nuts and bolts and screws and all sorts of stuff I, I don't know why they wouldn't just flip it over and drill another two holes but anyway we might do that um there's plenty of room in the cabinet it's not like it was leaned over to uh to fit in the cab because it's just a standard if not slightly higher than standard head shell at some point someone has installed a midi mod by a sherlock amplifiers Dale Sherlock, I believe his name is, um, used to make these, uh, you might even still make them, I'm not sure, but these were basically retrofit modules to uh, add MIDI functionality or channel switching functionality at least to uh, old school sort of amplifiers. Um, I'll have to look into it uh, as to what the functionality was, what the programmability was. I, I don't really know anything about these things because I've never seen one in the flesh. But I do remember, I think, getting guitar mags and seeing uh, seeing an ad in the in the back pages for them as a as a mod that you can either buy or get installed so i don't know i might do a bit of research on that and show you if you see some more information right now that means i have done the research and here we are champions quite a nice looking website here sherlock amplifiers midify your amp with sherlock amplifiers mini mod so that board looks identical to the one we've got just minus the dust you don't see these chips often they're like old microprocessors um, there's all these auxiliary chips for the buffers for the switching and stuff. So I imagine, um, perhaps he sourced like a billion of these chips and why change what works? I mean, it's pretty large. Like you could probably make the thing the size of a postage, postage stamp these days if you use modern microcontrollers and a lot of them have enough output capability that you could drive, uh, relays directly from them instead of using uh, separate like transistor arrays or, but yeah, he's got a few variations on it, which is pretty cool. Especially designed ones to suit certain amplifiers. The PV5150, I imagine that'd be a pretty popular one uh, for people using MIDI racks, uh, like MIDI rack effects and whatever. Uh, PVJSX, <laughs> Mesa Boogie Road King, and you can see because it's got a billion options, just like the Road King does. <laughs> yes, a billion. Uh, dual Rectifier, Triple Rectifier, Mark IV, JCM 2000, even though they're all dying, uh, unless they've had a board replaced. But yeah, it's customized per to make it easy per amp. So that's that's ultra cool. And then just a generic MIDI control switcher for AB switching, custom cables. Uh, so you can order cables to suit whatever rig you're building. I'm pretty impressed to be honest. Um, this is thought of everything, and it's very uh, very impressive. And the price is, in my opinion, too cheap for what it is three 300 bucks for a custom built midi switcher that's pretty impressive um i know a lot of amplifiers have this stuff built in these days but if you're using a classic amp that you love um it's pretty cool to be able to bring it up to you know modern sort of rig standards so old, old school construction uh you could have a little bit of difficulty fitting that in some amps which is probably why in this one they fitted it outside the chassis because you saw how full the thing was all the circuit boards take up pretty much all the room uh but yeah it was mounted on the outside i've removed it now um i'll ask the owner if he wants it back there was a 1993 uh sticker on the underside on the trace side of the circuit board so that's when it was manufactured i was in grade three and um i was just learning about electronics and just getting interested in electronics at the time that the particular sample that we've got was built which is kind of cool <laughs> so let's look at what our other stuff dale's got here I haven't crossed paths with Dale like either online or um or uh, in the real world IRL as the as the young kids say, uh, but it looks like he makes some pretty friggin' awesome 
amplifiers, both to suit modern high gain rock tastes and uh, also does the vintage thing too, as well as dedicated cabs. Um, so I haven't crossed paths with Dale. Um, I hope it's not because he is aware of me and thinks I'm a dickhead, <laughs> which has happened once or twice before. I thought, oh yeah, I would love to meet that bloke. He makes some awesome stuff and and then they avoid me because uh, I don't know, I made a video about one of their amps or something like that, blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, we're all mates here. We're all fighting the same battle. I think we should all be on the same side. But let's have a look at um, Workshop. Okay, so he still does repairs and custom work. Well, that's pretty cool. Metalworking area, amp manufacturing area, woodworking area, Tolex cover. He does it all. Looking at the photos here, that's promising. They look well built. Uh, yes, circuit boards. Circuit boards are the preferred manufacturing method if they are done to a high standard. There are so many that are not. There is nothing wrong with circuit boards. In fact, they're better in most cases than point to point uh, or even turret construction. Uh, you can use higher quality components because they're built for that form factor. The problem is that circuit boards were used by a lot of uh, companies to cut costs. Instead of making the best circuit board they possibly could, they made the cheapest one they could. So they got a bad rap for that. Hot Rod Series, Blues Series from Fender, JCM 2000s with board leakage, you know, all that stuff. Um, if you make a really good circuit board like the type that you find in Tone King's, uh, Friedman's, uh, Sir, they are the preferred medium. So he's got a tech info thing here. Yeah, basic tech stuff, little impedance uh, charts, make it easier for people. He's got an FAQ down here, which is good. I should probably have that on my website, but people don't never read it anyway. You've still got to send them to it and then they still don't read it and they just they want you to fix their problems for them. <laughs> but yeah that's pretty cool i should get in touch with him and um and just touch base and say g'day hopefully hopefully he doesn't mind me doing that oh, i just found an interview with him on uh, mixed down magazine getting to know dale sherlock hang on i know this amplifier that's a tesco that's a tesco 78r i can tell by all the six av sixes the candy candy red chassis the transformer with the uh, easily touchable primaries there <laughs> and the weird valves. I've worked on one of them. There's one in my, uh, I think I've actually got a Tesco playlist or a Japanese amplifier playlist. Check it out. So check this, uh, there's a link up there. I can put the link in the description. It goes through his history, which is pretty cool. And here's the instructions for the MIDI mod. You could either, I think he does installs as well as just supplies like a kit. He's thought of everything. He's gone into great detail. Uh, this is what I like to see. So that rotary switches to select the MIDI channel. So here it's showing, uh, so that second switch next to the uh, hexadecimal rotary switch is uh, the input switching. So it shows you how to wire it up even, the schematics, and is like I say, he's thought of everything. He's even got the switch for whether or not it's momentary or a toggle switch as the input. That is very smart. Um, that means that pretty much no matter what switch hardware you've got, you can make use of it with this circuit, which is great. Shows you what the MIDI mod's actually doing. It's just got a driver transistor there, which is switching on relay uh, coils. And it's also got the warning up here for the, the uh, current capability of the output switching uh, transistors. So 500 milliamp max at 50 volt per output. So chances are you be using you know, six volt relays or whatever. So great documentation. Uh, a product, in my opinion, if it's sold as a kit, the product's only as good as the documentation. Um, there's a lot of people selling kits with basically no documentation or very vague documentation. And I'd hate to see their email inbox. <laughs> ah. Let's get on with the show, shall we? But anyway, that's been disconnected and the owner uh, isn't interested in reusing it. So we'll just leave it there and it uh, becomes part of history. I think the customer said I could keep that if I wanted. Might be a cool little piece of history to hang on to. But you can't hang on to everything, champions. I'm not a hoarder. If I don't use it for three months, it goes in the bin. So just a quick look at the front. It's a two-channel chucha. It's got the uh, adjustable mid-frequency dial like you see on the SVTs. Independent reverb return per channel, independent master per channel. 
And it's got what they call the power attenuator. Uh, now, there's no load resistors in this cabinet, so I've got a feeling that'll be maybe something after the phase inverter, but we'll have a look. Okay, so a quick look at the power attenuator switch, if that is your real name. Just a pot being switched in and out from pins 7 and 8 of this header. And it's also got an LED with a current limiting resistor that's just being switched on and off. So when the power attenuator is switched on, 7 and 8 are connected via this pot. And that LED has a path to ground and will illuminate. Illuminate. So where does pin 7 and 8 go? That's J20. So we've got to go to the flow chart. Okay, that doesn't really make sense. There's no J20. Okay, well, this is embarrassing. So there's no J20. Even though it shows J20 there. Okay, then. They refer to it as logic board. So that should be it there, but there's no J20. Okay, well... The only multi-pin headers on that board are these two, 19 and 20. And that's them there, and it says 17. So I'm going to assume they go to J8. Okay, power attenuator 4 and 5. Okay, so they go from... <laughs> this is fun, isn't it? They go from power attenuator J8, pin 7 and 8. So total guesswork here. So pin 4 and 5 power attenuator so they go somewhere else they just do a loop back okay here we go power attenuator j1 pin 5 and 4 right okay so they're just it's just a post phase inverter master volume it's a cross line see that post phase inverter master volume i forget what ken fisher type that is but it's just a pot going from grid to grid or from pair of grids to pair of grids pulling them towards each other and attenuating the signal without adjusting the bias. So there you go, legends, nothing new under the sun, except for that rash under my arm. No, just kidding. Oh, let it get cold. Ugh. Black coffee cold. Nothing quite like it. Bring back beer. God damn it. And this is interesting. It's <laughs> first amp I've ever seen that's got a, uh, a key to turn it on. It's like when your parents ground you, they can, um, they can lock you out of using your hundred watt valve head <laughs> until you uh, until you clean your room properly. And you've got your ready switch and your go switch. So I guess uh, we'll have a look in a sec. But ready must be power and go is your standby. Now you can see here the power transformer is leaning over a little. Uh, it's been dropped on its end at some point, and the brackets have bent up and sideways. So uh, we'll flatten them back out and maybe see if we can put some fit some uh, larger washers onto there to try and prevent that happening again in the future. Looks like someone's replaced the reverb knobs there. In fact, someone's replaced the master too. I doubt it would have had different knobs for that area. But I also doubt we'll be able to get the original. So uh, we may have to just leave them as is. There was no complaint about that. So before we rotate her around, we'll just have a look at the preamp. So see down in there, the spring has missed the nipple. And uh, the spring's off to the side. That's a good way to break the tip off the valve and uh, make it lose vacuum. If possible, you always want to stick your head in there and just make sure that you've got the spring centered as you uh, as you install those shields or you can snap the tip off and you hear that <laughs> of hell that means you got to uh, buy another valve otherwise it'll end up looking like that one so all the valves are specified as 7025s or 12ax7s let's see what's actually in there v1 hot rod by slm electronics fender 7025 12ax7wa what was that one? 12A7A, right? Made in China. Ooh. Can't read it. Hmm. Writing's gone a bit smudgy. Got another fender. And the JJ's. They've all got vacuum. So we'll check them all for viability and uh, reuse if possible. Now a phase inverter, say so it's 12x7 as well, alright, Ruby, sweet. And we've got four 6550s, this one's either uh, configurable for 6550s or EL34s. You can see the little switch down there for the bias select to switch between the two with the uh, very smart switch cover there, so you only change it when you know what you're doing. So we've got two outer ones, uh, RCA 6550s, and the two inner ones are... Uh, Svetlana 6550s with a slightly wider bottle. Now, I think we've found the source of the smoke. That uh, valve envelope, the glass envelope there has gotten so hot 
that under vacuum that hot spot there has been sucked in sucked in uh, so the radiant heat off the anode there would have been so hot that it's actually softened the glass and the vacuum sucked it in still hasn't lost vacuum but uh, I dare say that valve's cooked all the bias supplies cooked or both got some tape tape on there showing which valves which uh, I'll remove that and clean off the residue if possible so just having a look at the fuses uh, it looks officially okay but let me check that's the HT 2 amp looks officially okay but I'll check them both now Alrighty then. Continuity test on HT fuse. Uh, we've got continuity. Continuity. And uh, on the mains as well. Hmm. It's always a bit of a uh, worry when the fuse ratings are correct and they've got continuity. Uh, but this reports of smoke being emitted <laughs> and the, uh, the valves, the output valves are sucking their cheeks in. I mean, I know the camera puts on 10 pounds, but... RCA, you don't have to be so vain. Well, let's flip her over and have a look, see what we're dealing with. All right, here's a look at the guts. Uh, you can already see some modifications up the back there. There's been some pretty significant damage in the past and someone's done some uh, repairs and touch-ups and stuff. Don't mind the, uh, the spare wire there. That's just me disconnecting the center tap, testing the DC resistance of the uh, output transformer. Someone's reworked the headers. Uh, they've probably had burnt or intermittent headers at some point, and they've just done the dodgy thing of soldering to the to the old header pins. Uh, I'll show you everything up close in a moment. But other than that, maybe one or two bypass cap replacements. Um, looks like one of the ceramic, maybe snubber cap replacements there on V1. Uh, the the preamp board looks otherwise stock. You can see back there a switch and uh, the the five pin in connector there that used to be the MIDI controller and we've got our reverb there with the RCA connectors in the top of the chassis now the bottom because it's inverted there may have been some uh, previous work down here not sure maybe someone sold it to it sold it a test lead to it or something at some point I don't know why you would you just use an IC clip but there is solder and flux on that resistor there so we'll see what that does and why the caps in the bias supply are tilted over sometimes you see that where people have um gone in and tried to replace components without removing the board which is quite quite common on pcb amps because uh the tech down the road that charges you know 50 percent less than uh the new uh doesn't necessarily even give you 25 percent of the labor so <laughs> i'd rather just remove the board and do it properly because you never know what those solder connections on the bottom look like once you've heated the the lead itself uh, you could essentially have a dry dry joint and uh not even know it and you do not want to be playing around with that kind of stuff in the bias supply you want to want to have it a hundred percent thousand thousand percent solid got my footy footy commentator one thousand percent solid fat man you ever notice uh with footy games they're always given 110 percent like, wouldn't that just be a hundred now? I, I don't know. <laughs> this is why I'm not into sports ball. Now you can see this header down here. They've marked the leads with uh, like dot coded which leads are which. Uh, but yeah, that everything's just tack soldered to the existing headers. Some of these gaps are like less than a millimeter with the, the stray strands of wire almost touching the next header. Uh, and stuff can easily peel off the headers. You've got melted insulation there melted insulation there so not a great job there uh, if i'm going to remove a header and solder i remove the header and solder i solder to the actual circuit board put the holes uh, put the wire through the hole solder like you normally would just a hard wired connection to the pads on the bottom of the pcb instead of this this dodgy stuff because you know you bump that you could actually bend that permanently if you're uh, working in here and accidentally nudged it or pulled the wire too hard now you got to now you've got a short circuit there that could cause other damage or just even intermittency. Um, it may be only just touching sometimes with vibration. Just stuff you want to avoid, mate. Just do it properly, Hey, Now, I'm not being negative, champions. I keep getting people saying, oh, you find fault with everything. Well, I've got news for you, champion. I am a fault finder and then hopefully a fault repairer. I'm also teaching you to, what to keep an eye out for in your own amps if you've had them serviced or if you're picking up second-hand amps, that kind of thing. It's not being negative, it's just uh, fault finding. If um, if you read uh, me finding faults with a negative tone in your head, well, that's your that's your projection you've got to worry about there. 
nothing to do with me same deal here champs we've got um just blobs of solder on there so uh it's not that hard to remove this board a couple of jacks and um you could swing that up and solder it properly so we'll, we'll do that to that header at least but otherwise the effects loop board i think they call it on the schematic with five jacks there is looking pretty clean uh so we'll check those shorting contacts are still nice and tensioned that's another big weak spot in a lot of amplifiers the effects loops like what do you call them shorting shorting contacts shunting contacts the ones that let the signal pass when no jacks plugged into anyway they sometimes get a bit corroded and you get some uh, intermittent behavior there f cutting the signal between the preamps the power amp quick way to determine if that's your fault is um, just grab a little patch lead and plug the effects loop send into the effects loop return or if it's got an effects loop bypass which uh you might have to check the schematic if that still bypasses a jack or not but uh you can you can often flick that switch and the problem goes away that's when you know you've got to replace it the uh the jack itself sometimes it can just be a bit of crud on the contacts underneath down here but more often than not, it's actual corrosion, uh, like it's broken through the plating, and now the base metal's exposed, which is often steel, and uh, it corrodes readily. Once you've removed the plating and the base metal's exposed, you can clean it with a bit of emery cloth or whatever, like, you know, 2000 grit, but once it's broken through that plating, it's just going to corrode again. It'll be okay for a couple of weeks, then the uh, the symptom will return. So you've got to replace that jack instead and uh, try and stick with the higher quality ones where you can. Cliff or Neutrick. There's a lot of no-name ones out there. I think um, new sensors sell them. And uh, they're not fantastic. In a pinch, you can use them, but don't expect them to last 20 years. So we've got our usual burns and melts in the installation everywhere. Uh, I think these were from a soldering iron maybe not actually that's interesting did we have a short from wire to wire because see how it's got this pattern here you can almost make out the uh the individual strands in whatever melted this like another hot wire i wonder if this at one point had some heater wire wrapped around it as well going to this header i have to see what goes to what. Because you had that there, it looks like um, maybe at some point there was a heater short or a HT to heater short. It looks like there's been a few traumatic events in this Amplifiers Life Champions. It's our job to let it have an easy life. Put it on the pasture where it gets to um, gets to mate with other other beautiful amps for the rest of its life. What am I talking about? Anyway, moving on. All right, so we've got some uh, packing tape. <laughs> packing tape used as insulation there, which is not insulation. Don't use that ever for insulation. It's got no insulative properties at all. Uh, none that we will trust. Anyway, so let's have a look at the solder connection underneath if there is one. Come on. Ah, oh, okay. No, it's just another melt. All right, so that almost looks like the copper's exposed but i think what it is is the other uh wire has melt burnt and melted the uh the insulation you can see the the hot wires the hot uh strands hot strands that sounds like a good new wave cover band name um <laughs> and uh they've just chucked a bit of tape around it and said should be right mate because fuck it if i want to crimp another connector on it and fair enough these are weird connectors in this thing your average uh, Joe probably doesn't have the, the tools to crimp the new ones, although I think you can just use a push-down tool. But anyway, uh, that's actually got some copper exposed there. The looms had a little bit of a mischief. Old Keith, he's done himself a mischief. You, <laughs> you guys watched Chopper yet? If you haven't, you should. It's a great movie. All right, champion, so this is what I'm talking about. You've got a lot of bare wire on there, and that could just touch that terminal, which is fun. And see, this terminal's moving very freely. Uh, so that's possibly got a dry solder joint on the bottom. And you see there's no trace on the top here. So uh, this is a dual-sided circuit board. And there must be a trace on the bottom there that that's supposed to be connected to. But either way, it could touch that wire. And this wire's got strands coming off it. And I reckon that could peel straight off. Eh, harder than it looked, but not great. Um, so all of this got to be addressed. And the same goes down the other end. That wire's barely soldered. It's just like uh, slightly wetted with solder and just tacked on there, so that's not how you do business. That wire's got a... Oh, there we go. That didn't even take two fingers to remove. I just 
Yep, not reliable. All of these, tack soldering again, just peels off. Not the way to do the bizzo. Oh, you can see here the replacement transformers secondaries have been uh, spliced onto the existing wires, probably so they didn't have to replace the spade connectors at the other end. These ones down here. Splicing is valid, you can do it, as long as you do it right. Uh, looking at the rest of the work on this amp, I'm not going to let this one go before removing that heat shrink on every splice and just checking it for integrity. And if we've done that, the only way to get heat shrink back on is by cutting it and putting a new piece on and re-splicing re, uh, it again. It's tempting to just leave them, but after looking at the rest of the work on, on this, uh, I can see that one there. If you look closely, it's like uh, it's got the bulge through the... Uh, through the pants um you can see it's actually just a tack tack solder joint there as well uh, that's the secondary of the output transformer we do not want any weakness in this area we want it to be solid as a very solid thing over here more melty mcmelt face you can actually see i reckon this is off a solder barrel sometimes you uh you you know where to put your attention towards previous work because you can see the melts in the wires and you look down you're like oh yeah he was working down here and then you can double check the work down there and then fix up the, the insulation none of these techs know where their barrel is um i'd hate to know what they're like in bed <laughs> oh, i cracked myself up wrong hole fool <laughs> what movie was that from scary movie uh all right so a quick look at the output board that's our phase inverter there to the left Moving our way along, we've got some trace repair. We've got evidence of flyback, uh, a flyback event. We've got broken traces, wires replacing them. No regard to lead dress, which could be causing other issues. We've got solder bridges. We've got dry solder joints, little tiny little wires where uh, you've got a lot of heated current passing through. Uh, burns in random places, places where the fiberglass is delaminated. Ooh, nasty. Oh, look at the heater connections. I'll show you that close up in a second. We've got the whole shebang here, champs. We um, really need to uh, maybe just say no more for this poor little board. Just hardwire everything. You've got a whole section of the board that's been drilled out down here. I think this used to have a... Um, heater balance pot on the like a trim pot on the actual board it's got a large section of the board missing there it's been looks like dremeled out maybe and uh, i reckon there used to be a trim pot there there's been a heater to ht short and kablamo this whole area is charred so they chopped it out and ran wires mounted this weird pot on the back panel got a central resistor there and then these are two uh two lines to the heater there to, to make your hum balance pot. In my opinion, all of this is kind of unnecessary. Just add two resistors to ground and, you know, fusible half watt resistors around the 100 ohm area may be slightly misbalanced as I've showed and I think Lyle has shown in some videos. And uh, you're golden. No need for a pot on the back that can be adjusted by someone that doesn't necessarily know what they're doing. Uh, not only that, but this pad has been lifted to, uh, to make the resistor reach it and that's not reliable either. So all of that's got to come out. So I think I'm going to replace this uh, whole board. Well, not replace it, but remove it. And uh, replace the sockets. So instead of PCB sockets, we'll put some eyelet sockets on there. And I'll hardwire everything on the uh, output section, which is just your screen grid resistors and the uh, grid stoppers. Just like a fender, you know. It's mounted on the, on the valve sockets. As for the phase inverter, we've got a screw here, which won't be used anymore because we'll have no circuit board. We've got a screw here which is used for the valve, but we could also possibly mount uh, a tag strip on this side. We can mount the components for the phase inverter to them, two tag strips, and uh, then hardwire everything to the output sockets and should be golden for a very long time after that. So I think that's the plan of attack. And while we've got the boards out, we'll give them an inspection. Uh, just get all the wiring as good as we can get it and uh, give it a recap because she is about... Ah, uh, what, 35 years old, 30-something years old, something like that. I think it was um, 1990 or 91 model, so 30-something years old. She will live to fight another day, despite the traumatic life it's had so far. So not a classic amp, but I think we could get it sounding good. It'll be a 
unique little chutra and new set of EL34s down there instead of the 6550s because they're a horrendously expensive valve to uh, to, to source and uh, uh, reliability is an issue with them as well. Any valve that's, uh, you know, not your average common garden variety uh, vanilla, uh, insert other word here, valve is going to cost you an arm and a dick. And I've only got two of them. You guess which is which. Oh, one last look at the heater wiring. That's lovely, isn't it? Someone did that, looked at it, and went, hmm, job done. Gave themselves a pat on the back and carried on about their day. Hopefully that person wasn't the customer. And if it was the customer, uh, Pete, sorry, mate. I'm just taking the piss. <laughs> Take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> So I'll leave this little one here, champions. I'll uh, just show you the finished product once she's together. I don't think there's any anything too, uh, you know, incredibly uh, amazing about this one. So until then, take it squeezy. I'll talk to you uh, on the next one. Like and subscribe or I'll melt your insulation with my soldering barrel.